Hey, this is Ruben Lowing. You're in McAllen, Texas. This is my leadership talk for Tuesday, April 10th. So, I still have a regular job. And it's been kind of slow because I can't really go anywhere. Um, most warehouses don't let you in, right? And I've had this one warehouse I worked really hard to get in their business. And then I had to work really hard to keep their business because the person I was dealing business, doing business with left. And, <clears throat> and I just kept showing up and I kept being patient. They weren't nice. They, they were not nice to me. And, uh, but I kept coming back, smiling, bringing them coffee and donuts, right? And then I, this whole COVID thing started. And I called them up and said, can you come over here? Okay, they weren't somebody that could like to do business over the phone. And they, it says, you know, we trust you. Whatever you think we need, you know, let me know and I'll, I'll give you a PO. Bam, right. Now I want to take care of them. And so I have to go get them trained. And they get this, you know, guy, young guy. He's not really from the industry. doesn't really know how things work. Um, I, I sh explained the chemicals to him. Um, but they, well, I couldn't demonstrate it, right, because their, their warehouse was full. They had, you know, pallets of produce all over the place. And so I kept hitting him, hitting him, hitting him, you know, when when can I come back to do some training? And they they stood me up last Friday and, and, and yesterday, but they made time for me this morning. So I go there, and they got a new operations guy. And... He's like, what do you do? Who are you? What are you doing here? And when I told him, he's like, really? You guys will do this? You guys will do, you guys will get us a, a certificate? You guys will, you know, and um, you, and so I'm like, yep. So I said, so then I take him up stairs and show him what they got. And the, he had no idea that they've been buying Clorox from Sam's Club. <laughs> and, uh, you know, they already have, you know, two 55-gallon drums full of chlorine, right? And, uh, and our cleaner degreaser and, uh, and a uh, parasitic acid, which is a, basically hydrogen peroxide to the sanitizer. So they got it all, right? And what happened was, here's this guy is. Okay, he's like racking his brain trying to figure out how to get thing, you know, make that warehouse where he wants it and, you know, get get everything co you know, kosher so they can start, they can operate. And then I walked in, okay. And that happens, that happens a lot. It happened with me with this business. I'm sitting there at my desk at my office as a mortgage broker. <clears throat> and I just heard Robert Campbell prophesy everything that was gonna happen in the, a year and a half down the road. Okay, this was June of 2006, and he basically spelled out how all the dominoes were going to fall, the, the option arm uh, were going to recast, and the payments were going to go up, were going to double, people were going to, you know, property values were going to go upside down, people were going to start walking away from their, their homes because they couldn't pay their mortgages, and Lehman Brothers and Bear Stearns were going to go bankrupt. And I... I'm like, what? What am I? What am I gonna do? And the phone rings the next day. Hey, you know, and that's why I found this business. Okay, and so what I'm saying is, by two two things, by just going to just talking to people, they may have told you no, they may have, uh, you know, wouldn't listen to you, wouldn't wouldn't give you an opportunity to even show them what you got. Right, they wouldn't. They wouldn't do a seven step, right? But then things are happening, and then, as long as you keep touching them and keep you know showing up every once in a while, then the light will come on. Okay, you know it's like said when the when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. Right. One, and then other things you you have to go go through the numbers. And not get discouraged by it. Okay. Listen, I'm here to... 
And then when you when people really, what's really magic is when you say things the right way, it cements in their head. If you, say, if you don't, if you say things the wrong way, they reject it. When you go through the blue book and you show them the table of context, do you think that if somebody's looking to be to retire or to be financially independent, they need to know this information? You'll get a yes. Okay. And then when you go to the uh, proper foundation, you get them to understand that they're, their greatest asset is themselves, and that's why they need the protection. And then talk about the, the debt management, and then in the emergency fund, and then in the investments. And so what do you, when, you, when you think of investments, what do you think of? And they will tell you what they know. Do you have any of these? Do you, you know, you, can, you should ask that when you go through uh, the index first, okay? And all that gives you an idea of what they know and what they don't. And then you go, you know, you get to go through the rest of it, right? And then you get them to say, you, you get them to commit to say that they need these type of products to be able to be financially free, to be able to be, to eventually quit working and retire. And if you don't, that what you said isn't worth anything to them. It's just noise. Okay. They might, you know, they might hear it. I mean, they might catch something. Well, first time I ever saw this was at a Kiwanis Club meeting. And what clicked in my mind was the Rule 72. And I knew I had $50,000 sitting in a checking account, getting 4%. And I knew that wasn't going to get me to the promised land. I wasn't going to make it to retirement like that. And so I started thinking, you know, what can I do? I didn't know you could get better than 4% anywhere institutionally, okay? And I came up with this scheme of an interactive boxing television show. And I had it well thought out, and I put $75,000 of my money invested in that project. And uh, a producer pretty much ate all my money. And when I went to see the commissioner for the Nevada State Athletic Commission, Mark Ratner, he said, the officials won't let you do it. I was done. I was done. And then the the economy slipped, and and uh, you know my cash flow stopped, and I was done. Even I was buried, even further. Then I got divorced, and then you know it took a long time to get out of that hole. Okay, and uh, so that's another thing. When people get, they don't pay attention. They don't. They don't want. They're not interested in this. This is not important to me. I don't want to think about that. Right. Then they start getting old enough with it. Now they like, oh, I'm behind. And what happens when they get behind is they take undue risk. And it can end up even worse. And I'm a, I have a testimony for that. Okay, so what we have is important. And those people that, oh, I'm not interested. I'm like, you know, you know you're going to be. There's going to come a time. So keep my number. And tell you what, though. I mean, our ideal prospect, and most of the time you, you don't get that from somebody who's married, got kids, owns a house, makes $50,000 a year, but they want to do better, okay? You don't get that from them. You get that from somebody who's single, and they're like, they're trying to figure out life, and they're just enjoying their life, and they're trying to get it, you know, they, they, you, don't, you don't get that from, or you get it from people that are maybe outside that. They've already, you know, they got their, their, annuity or they're pension funded you know they've already they're past that point the, you you get but you don't get it from the uh, typical 28 to 48 married have kids owns a housemaker makes fifty thousand dollars a year but they want to do better okay but the uh, when people start thinking okay and then when you start waking them up to what they traditionally think 
stocks, bonds, mutual funds, real estate, then you show them the tax consequences, you know, so then they start, they, you know, most people put it into an annuity, okay, in uh, an IRA, so they could be, you know, they, they qualify, they're qualified plans, they qualify for a tax deduction of the contribution, it goes tax deferred, but when they take that out, it's tax their regular income, and they don't really realize that until you really point it out to them. And that's when you start talking about the insurance and the IRS code 7702 alpha, where you know you don't get a tax deduction on the contribution, but the money's going to grow tax deferred, and uh, and also it's tax advantage when you take it out. But then when you get them to understand the floor of the index universal life, where how much better their money's going to do than being in the market. Right, and it, they never heard that before, and they don't trust you, and they don't, they, they, they lag, they, they're checking everything else out, okay, they're listening to these advisors, and these advisors, advisors are, are, have been hurting for the last 10 years, ever since the index funds came out, the advisors can't keep up with it, they can't do as well as the SMP, because their money's out at the wrong time, or in at the wrong time. They have your money in the market at the wrong time and out of the market at the wrong time. So when it's up, they're out. When it's down, they're in. Okay, and that, that they hate the uh, index funds. Okay, they, they hate them. And then, so you're not going to get, you're going you're gonna to get conflicting information when you go on YouTube or you go on the internet. Okay, because they have to, beat down the uh, these products to get you to even look at them okay look at their advisory the advisories have gone whew, you know series seven traders and and um, investment advisors you know they they've been hurting for the last 10 years because they've lost a blind share of their business to the index funds okay and i ain't even talking about the uh the policies the iul Straight up index funds. Okay. Um, so anyway, he, he, here's what I got today on the call today. There, two of these people, they had tragedy in their life. Okay. One had um, his father died. Okay, and he got after it. Okay, and qualified green jacket. Another one, you know, she's from the Philippines, living in Hawaii. Um, she had family members die, and she got after it. Man, well, when I was in the business before, and I had about 30-some people on my team, and nobody was nobody was doing anything, and then my dad died. And my dad loved it that I was in this business. My dad was very money-motivated. You know, he, uh, he was a farmer. He used to read the financial pages every day, all right, determine whether... It was he should grow corn or wheat. You know, was Russia selling or buying? Okay, my dad was pretty savvy. He missed his calling. He should have been a financial advisor. Okay, and when he found out I was in this business, he loved it. And so when I came back for the funeral, I scheduled four appointments a day, ten days in a row. And uh, I only wrote business with three families. It was six pieces of business: husband, wife, husband, wife, husband, wife. But everybody else got help because I have that skill. I know of my years of in the mortgage business and as a debt management consultant, I can help anybody. And so everybody got some kind of help. They got help budgeting. They got structured into debt roll-down strategy or roll-up strategy, however you want to say it. They started, you know, putting, you know, freeing up some cash, you know, eliminate some, un, you know, unneeded expenses. They all got help, right? But I wrote those, those six pieces of business. It was 66,000 points. And it was $9,000 in commission. I got paid in four days. I'm like, yes, I turned the corner. And then my wife told me she wanted a divorce. And it crushed me. And I was emotionally down for a long time. 
a very long time, like four and a half years. I was didn't have a car. I didn't have a place. I wasn't homeless, but it's a miracle from God, and then and some very generous friends that kept me from being on the street. And then I started doing some things. I started, you know, working out. Started changing my diet, and my confidence started coming back. And the uh, you know, just all of a sudden, and I had good friends. I had good friends that helped me when I needed it. And, and at the time, it just presto changed it like overnight. I was, the apple cart was back on its wheels. Okay. But that was just the, now, it was just, now I had something sturdy, you know, something to stand. I had, had reliable transportation, had a place to live. All right. And now I can get going. All right. But the, I'm listening to these people that had the, the deaths in the family and how they, it sparked them. It, it ignited them into action. And I, I remember that happening for me. And I don't want but I don't want to lose anybody else to, to, to get after it again. Okay. I know dad's up there and dad's looking at me going, you know, I know you can do this. All right. And, uh, so I'm going to, you know, harness that and, and get this going. But the true magic to this is you got to plug into, if you would have heard what I heard today, you know, and then there's going to be the, the Titan call tomorrow and the, the Fen night. I mean, this, this is a drastic com contrast with what we're doing compared to and what you're we're talking about and experiencing and listening to is just totally different than anything else other than this. Okay, everything else, you know, you start saying, okay, this is Revelations playing out. I mean, it's scary. And the more people we help, the basically the better it's going to be for for our nation and this planet. You know, it's it's and it's hard. You know, I grew up on the farm, and you know, there's sometimes there's a heap of manure that I had to shovel, and there was I couldn't think of any quick way to do it. Okay, except grab a shovel and a pick short and start digging. And that's kind of how I see what you got to do with this. All right. I hope these words of wisdom help somebody on my team. All right. Ruben Lowing out.